What's up, y'all? It is Kimmy Coco, your host for Innovative Black Stations, Connecting the Dots. And you know what time of year it is. It's time for everyone to pay attention to what's going on. Vote. So we have a very special guest, and we are honored to have Tamika Robrowski-Houston. And I think I said Robrowski right. You did. It's it's Robowski. Leave the H alone. It's Robowski. Robowski. I keep trying to push that H in there, but you will have to remember this name because she is running for, tell everybody what you're running for. Fulton County Superior Court Judge is the seat that's vacated by uh, Judge Constance Russell. And how long has Judge Constant, Constance Russell been in that seat? I think Judge Russell was appointed in 1996, so it's been about 24 years. It'll be 24 years. Yeah. So we talked about earlier how important it is to vote. We talk about that all the time. Um, we, in our conversation before the show, we're, telling, we're talking to each other about how important it is to have people come back out. So kind of go over what the process is and what stage we're at now and what we need people to do to get you elected. OK. Um, the general election, in my particular race, there were four candidates, so myself and three other, um, three other opponents. And because in the course of the general election, after all the votes were counted, um, you're required to have 50% plus one vote. And because of the number of people in the, in the race, nobody got 50% plus one. So now the two uh, highest vote getters are now in a runoff. Okay. And so everybody needs to come back out to the polls. So everybody who voted, if you really want your vote to count and your choice to be elected, you have to come back out and you have to vote again so that those vo votes can be counted again. And this time it'll be the 50% plus one and you'll be able to get it this time. Okay, so we'll make sure- We'll be able to be elected this time. <laughs> you have to come back out and vote. So this is statewide or is it just for- Just Fulton County. Fulton County, mm -hmm. okay. So if you live in Fulton County, pay attention to this because you vote for judges. And I think that, you know, of course the big elections are important, but the local elections are what affect your daily lives. Exactly. Um, and reading up on some of the things that you were passionate about, I think family court came up. Mm -hmm. And so tell us how that became one of the passions of yours. Well, I actually am sitting by designation as a Superior Court judge now in Fulton County Superior Court's Family Division. Mm -hmm. So I handle um, all of the domestic relations cases that include divorce, custody, legitimation, paternity, um, all of that I handle right now. I handle everything from the initial conferences that you come in for mm -hmm. to any motions you may have, any discovery issues as you proceed through your case, all the way through to final trial. So that, that's what I do now. That's what I was appointed to do now. So mm -hmm. I think that people, when you think about, you know, oh, I'm going to court and I'm going to face this judge, you don't realize how you kind of pick the, the people that you're going to have to interact with and Absolutely. the people that are going to make decisions that are going to affect your life. Um, now with COVID and everything going on, um, the courts have had to kind of think of innovative ways to mm -hmm. go and process cases. Um, what do you think going forward? Do you think that's going to change the whole scape of court proceedings or do you think that? I sincerely hope so because I have found there was about a, two week lag time between when we first closed down uh, back in March mm -hmm. and when we picked back up, because I'm, I'm hearing cases now. I get up, put on my robe, go into my home office, turn on Zoom, oh. and I'm having court. Mm -hmm. And um, But during that two week period, we had to figure out the logistics, how to get the notices out, people who had missed court, you know, their court had been, their, their scheduled court had been missed during that time period mm -hmm. and then people coming forward who already scheduled to appear in court in person now we had to get out notices and include zoom instructions and instructions about how to submit any evidence and exhibits and anything they wanted to get to the court how to do that so we went through that time period getting that type of those type of things together and then we started right now um, i work under judge glanville mm -hmm. Any day of the week, you can go on YouTube, put in your Glanville, and they're right there. Most of the judges are on YouTube, and they're live streaming just to maintain that whole um, 
that whole concept of being open to the public. Right, to so, transparency. Yeah. yeah, so you can go in just like you could walk in the court on any given day when the courts were open and go watch a, a trial or whatever. You can you can go on YouTube now and see some of the proceedings for the judges that are having them. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. um, I never knew that. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, that's probably a good idea for people to do to kind of get a feel for who the judge is that you're going to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, so are you from Georgia? I'm originally from the suburbs of Chicago. Really? So how long have you been in Georgia? But I've been here since 97. Oh, so I mean, I guess that so means... I'm technically a peach. Plus, I married a Grady baby. So does that help? Does <laughs> I, that... Think that, I think that Am helps I in? boost. Okay. <laughs> that helps boost your, your peachness. Okay. <laughs> so what other issues do you think um, Fulton County are facing right now? Um, it, and this was even without COVID, was accessibility to the courts. Mm. It was an issue. Efficiency is an issue. And um, something that, that I found, we have a lot of specialty courts, drug court, veterans court, um, mental health court, rental accountability court. We have a lot of those types of courts that hone in on specific issues that address the offenders. And I, I don't think they're being utilized in the way that they should. So between, you know, once I'm elected, that would be something that those would be my three issues in terms of the accessibility. People believing that I can't afford to go to court. I, I can't afford to file the fees, it costs too much. And then if I get there, I can't afford a lawyer and things like that. And that's the perception that it's just not accessible, but there are resources out there that just, I don't think they're publicized enough, that they're emphasized enough. People don't know enough about them in terms of for the filing fees. You can file a fee waiver. You don't necessarily depend on your financial really? condition. You don't have to, you're right, you don't have to file, you don't have to pay the filing fee. You can file, ask for a pauper's affidavit. You fill that out, give your expenses, your income, things like that, and then there's a determination made whether or not you need, you have to pay the filing fees. And then your your case is filed at that point. You can pursue it with respect to having an attorney, of course, and criminal cases, you can be appointed a public defender, but it's the civil cases that kind of, that are kind of in the middle because you don't get appointed. You're not entitled to, to counsel in those cases, but there are resources right in the courthouse to assist you. We have a Justice Resource Center, and, and you can't get to it now, but I'm just saying we have these resources out there because outside the courthouse, there's the Volunteer Lawyers Foundation, there's mm. Atlanta Legal Aid. There are those kinds of organizations that are set up specifically to help people with low or no cost representation. So I don't think that that's put out there enough so that, that's why I think it's just a perception versus the reality. Because these resources are there. They just don't know. You guys, that is some great information that we, that we were just given right now. I think that, you know, there is a misconception that if you don't, you can't afford a lawyer, then you are more reluctant to seek mm -hmm. any type of redress from the courts. Because you're like, it's not made for me. The reality is in domestic relations cases, probably 70% of the people that I see are unrepresented in oh. divorce cases and legitimation cases, things like that. And again, this is when the Justice Resource Center was, was in play. You could go up there, get the forms that you needed, get a free consultation with an attorney. And sometimes you just needed the forms completed, depending on, you know, if it was something you and the mother of your child agreed upon, you just need to get the, the documents completed and submitted to the court so you can get an order. So, and, but again, I don't think that the education is I, there. I don't think so either. And I think that that needs to, that needs to happen. Yeah, that needs to happen. Yeah, so if, when you, as the judge, when you see that this is going on and you know that people aren't aware of these things, do you give them more time? Do you suggest that they go research these things and then maybe come back? I, I do. Because I think that my, my duty as a judge goes beyond just saying yes or no, you win or lose. I think that there is an educational component there. I do protective orders as well. I preside over those. So people who fear for their safety because of domestic violence or stalking, they come in to see me for that 12-month hearing after they get their initial order. And a lot of times I have seen uh, protective orders come out of situations where you have a mom and a dad, they have the child, they're not married, the child isn't legitimated, and something occurs. Somebody gets a new uh, significant other, somebody gets mad with the other, and even though they've 
had visitation and things like that in the past, now that stopped. Yeah. Because the reality is... They have a new situation. Right. They have a new situation, and they come into court, and, you know, at, at, right there, he's expecting his child, and she's like, no, and that causes conflict, and words are said, and so they come in, and now I'm like, okay, so what was the arrangement prior to this new situation? Mm. Well, he would get him then, he would do this, he would do that. They had a plan. But what they didn't have was the underlying legal process that was necessary because I always have to ask him, is your child legitimated? And what does that mean? I don't think Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll go, Well, my name's on the birth certificate. I give money. I'll take care of my child. Yeah. But have you gotten a court order that says that you are the legal father of this child? Mm. No, I never went to court. You have to do that? You absolutely have to do that. Oh. Because at birth, a child has, with, with in unmarried parents, mm -hmm. that child, I don't care who signs the birth certificate, whatever, there's one legal parent, the mother. She has sole legal and physical custody of that child. She does not have to let there be any visitation, any of that. That's discretionary. But what he can do is file that legitimation, and then at that point, mm. paternity testing, if that's necessary, you go through all of that, and at that point, you get equal footing with mom. You are now the legal father. You are just as entitled to custodial rights, visitation rights, all of that as the mom. And you go from that point and you develop a custodial situation. You develop visitation plans and parenting plans and things like that. So you have that equal footing. But a lot of, a lot of guys don't know that. And while I can't give them legal advice and tell them to go file this or right. go do yeah. that, yeah. I say, well, my hands are tied because without legitimation, I can't give you visitation. It is completely up to her. Wow. And they'll say, well, what am I supposed to do? And when we were in court, I would tell them, you can go to the Justice Resource Center and you can ask for a consultation there. And literally, that is all the conflict was about. That was right. it. Once that's eliminated, there's usually no issue. <laughs> wow. So um, on the criminal justice front, mm -hmm. what do you think some of the issues are that are facing, Fulton County is facing right now? I think that efficiency is going to be on that side efficiency is going to be an issue um and then when we get to those specialty courts the specialized courts i think that that that's another issue that they're underutilized in that when you get someone who has um allegedly committed a crime and they come in and they either plead guilty or they're found guilty if we don't get an in-depth look into what the root cause, mm. what the root background is, has there been multiple prior offenses? What have those offenses looked like? Have they been, what type of you know, custodial status have they been in? Have they just been on probation? Have they just, you know, have they been already on a sentence and have they been sent right. away those things just to get an idea of what you're dealing with as a whole because otherwise if you're just pushing them through we're not dealing with the root cause and you just it's basically just a, a circle and nothing's being accomplished and i think that sometimes there are people that are in the system and it's mental health there are issues yes, with, yes. They're, they're either not on, they have meds and they're not taking them they've never been diagnosed um, it's never been addressed. And if they can be in a program where that's addressed and you no longer have that factor in there, now you have a person who no longer has a mental health problem that is a basis for directing their behavior. Now we may actually get a different outcome. We may not see them back because we've addressed the, the root the real issue. issue. Right. Wow. So the same with substance abuse, um, with the drug course, same thing. If you don't address that root cause, then we're just kind of doing the same thing over and over. And you know, it, it, you're not dealing with the actual, wow. the, the root cause. Yeah, and so. I think, I mean, that's good for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a lay person, I guess, a regular citizen, mm -hmm. <laughs> for me to vote, I would look for that in someone, you know, someone mm -hmm. that looks for 
the alternative to someone that looks at people as a person and someone I that think is you have say, to. I think it's rec- you have to. Otherwise, it's just it, it just becomes an assembly line. I remember pra- when I was in well, when I was doing criminal cases, I was down in another county, and um, I had a client who basically had him and his friend had gone over to their little female friend's house. And when they left the house, a pair of her younger brother's shoes had been missing. They were missing. And so when her parents came home, she wasn't supposed to have anybody in the house. So she was like, oh no, I don't know what happened. Somebody stole his shoes. And Mm. these young men, of course, were identified as being at the house and all of this happened. They called the police. Police got involved. She finally told the parents got together and they were like, okay, you all can stop investigating. We've taken care of it. Don't worry about it. Instead, they get warrants. And now my client is charged with a uh, burglary and the parents have already taken care of it. And so at this point we're in there and I have the parents of the young lady there, the victims, and they're like, we don't want this because in that county, burglary was 10 to 3. Oh my. Period. Oh. No questions, regardless of the circumstances, whatever. And my argument was, but if we do that, and we just literally have a table that says, you do this offense, and you get this many years, and that that's it. We don't care about the circumstance. We don't even care what the victims say, because we have victims here saying they don't want that. That that's not that yeah. was not their goal. They've addressed this in a manner that will ensure that this won't happen again. Because these are people that that know each other. Well, if you don't like what I'm doing, then you can vote me out. Was the response of the judge when I made the argument that if we do that, you don't need the judge, you don't need the prosecutor, you don't need anyone because we just go by the list and that's that. Mm-mm-mm. And so yeah, so yeah, it's very important to vote people. <laughs> It's very important to vote people. <laughs> I mean, and not just for the president. Like, you know, Absolutely. these are everyday issues that could happen to anyone. You know, you could just walk, like we were just discussing in that scenario, and you just, you know, go visit someone, and all of a sudden now you're in a situation where you have to go to court, and wouldn't it be nice to have a judge that's hearing your case that looks at you as a person and not as a statistic and has good judgment? <laughs> For lack of a better word. And here's the thing with when you said that not just for the president and for Congress, because in Congress, they said they they make federal law and then the president, all that. That's great. But when we walk around every day here on the sidewalks in Georgia, we're under the law that's created over in the Gold Dome up the street. So the state representatives, that's who's making the law that most closely hits us every single day. And I know a lot of people um, move to Georgia. Georgia is one of the fastest growing states and has been for years. Um, I started telling people, stay away. Yeah, a lot of people say, (laughs) a lot of people, I see a lot of memes on social media like, we're closed, Atlanta is closed. (laughs) We can't fit anybody else in here. And then, you know, when the bridge, when the bridge burned down, like, that's because there's too many people (laughs) out here. But um, seriously, you know, when you, move somewhere, one of the things that you look is like the neighborhoods, the schools, but I don't see many people look for the laws. Mm -hmm. And the laws in Georgia are very different than say a New York or a New Jersey or a Chicago. And you know, you do have the power to change that with, you know, when you vote or what you come here, but you should definitely get familiar with the people that are running for the city council, the Absolutely. judges, Absolutely. And, and stuff like that, because we have the power to change Georgia. Mm-hmm. School boards. The that, school that's boards. Their kids yeah. And the schools that they're attending. So when you are looking at family cases, do you ever say, I think you guys should give it another try? Like if it was a couple that, you know how you watch divorce court and, and then, you know, sometimes the judge is like, yeah, I don't think you guys really should break up your family. I think you should try it again. So I don't, I don't know that I've done it intentionally, but I always end up, I don't know if it's just me, I just end up with, I had a final trial. And just to give you the end, they didn't end up staying together. But 
they did end up going to counseling. We put it off for three months. And at the final trial, we're sitting there and we're going through and the husband just asked me, he was like, I just have a question. And he goes, and he starts to go, and it wasn't even a question, it was a statement. He started to go into these deep feelings and these, and I'm just like, and my, my undergrad degree is in psychology. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, this sounds like a session. <laughs> and so we go and he's revealing these things. And then she is like, I have, I have never heard this before. I'm like, okay. And so it immediately turns from, okay, what witnesses do you have and what witnesses do you have to, so how do you feel about that? Because at the conclusion of this, yeah, I mean, issues are going to be decided one way or the other, but we've agreed that they're based upon the police, there's going to be a divorce. And so she goes, I've, I've never heard that. And, I'm, and so then I guess the counselor in me goes so has is there a reason why because if anybody needs to hear that it would have been her yeah and prior to now yeah well he didn't like the counselors they were going to and this that and the third and we literally spent two and a half hours in <laughs> an extended counseling session almost because they i was and and i had deputies like and i'm like but <laughs> But you, you know, you did You wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure because, again, if you want a divorce, that is absolutely what I'm there to do. Right. But if you don't, I have to be here anyway. Yeah. There are other cases. I, I don't have a dog in that hunt. It was with a greater appreciation for how they would co-parent their child, mm. and for each other. I think. And yeah. I'll be honest with you, they'll probably end up married again. But that's just that's just me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I've seen that too, where they've gone away, they didn't get divorced, came back, got divorced, and then they ended up married again. <laughs> wow. See, so it's I, interesting. My job is not dull. Right. It's not dull at all. No, that's cool. But I, you know, I'm like, do judges do this for TV? Does this happen in real life? Do, you know, do the judges no. really say, you know, maybe you guys should reconsider this? And I always want. I always think that that's good if a judge does do that, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I hear what you guys are saying, but. Mm -hmm. I think that just makes, you know, humanizes. Yeah, but I'm, and I'm not going to say it, though. They no, have to tell right. me. Yeah. So I just ask them the questions. And if they give me the information, I'm like, so if I ask you if there's any reasonable hope for reconciliation, what's your answer? Because I've heard counseling. I've heard this, that, and the other. Right. So is that hope or no? And then they'll go, well, could we just have some time? Sure. Sure. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, okay, we're going to vote, right? And mm -hmm. So early voting starts? July 20th. And absentee voting is going on now if you got a ballot. I got a ballot in the mail. Now, did you get your ballot or is that the absentee ballot application? So... I filled out an application for the initial okay, you gotta election. Fill out is that what that is? I went for the general. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I filled out one for the general, general, and they sent you your ballot. I just got it today. From the general? No, no, no. Okay. I voted absentee. I mailed that in. Okay. So today I got another one in the mail. Okay. You just need to see if it says application or if it's the ballot. So it may be application for November. Let me saying? ask you this. Yeah. Does it have Does it have my name on it? I don't live in Fulton County. Oh, okay. So it, does it have the candidates' names on it? I didn't open it. Okay. So because if it shows the candidates' names, that's your ballot. If it's just something for you to fill out, you have to fill that out, send it back, and then they'll send you your ballot for November potentially. Mm -hmm. it's, do, are oh, there for, any runoffs in your county? I'm sure. County? And I live in Cobb County, so I'm trying to see. I think so. I'm gonna. I started. I don't know. I don't know. know. Why Those I judges were one outright. Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah, there I don't was know. A, what's going on but I'll, I'll look into it because there so do you think that there's going to be just a change over in the situation with voting in Georgia because we always have so much so many issues and the voter suppression is real here in Georgia do you see that there are changes being made that in November we will have an easier time I know that there was a like a task force appointed 
Yeah. And they just did, I think it was like a 11 or 12 page report that was released on some of the problems that they were seeing and then on some of the suggestions that um, were made as a part of the task force. So I, I see that they are at least looking at them and that there's some things that they've implemented already because I know in Fulton County, last time we started out, I think with six early voting locations, then we went to eight about the two weeks in, and then um, there was another one added right in that last week, so we had nine. Mm. This time we're starting out with 20, including State Farm Arena. So that should help I with think, some of the congestion and things. Um, so when you do early voting, you can go to State Farm Arena. I think that that's going to be one of the largest yeah. ever yeah. Um, mm -hmm. voting early voting locations. But when it comes down to the election day, you, you have, have to, to vote in your... You have to go where it says on your voter registration. So Fulton County, pay attention. You have an action item now. You have to do your early, early voting if you don't want to wait online. Um, and if you do, which you saw what the lines were looking like before, so I would not suggest that. So um, tell people where they can read more about you or reach you. You can go to my website at www.electrabowskihouston.com. And that's H-R-O-B-O-W-S-K-I-H-O-U-S-T-O-N.com. Or for Instagram, it's um, Elect Judge Houston. And I'm sorry, that's Twitter, is Elect Judge Houston. And then um, for Instagram, it's Elect Robowski Houston as well. And Robowski is H-R-O-B-O-W-S-K-I yes. dash Houston. And the no H dash. It's all one word. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. And the H is silent in case you want to say it. <laughs> because I've been trying to put the H in there and it, it's not right to do that. Um, so thank you for coming. Thank you so much for I having me. I wish you the me. best of luck. I really, really do. And if you, when you win and if you come back, we can discuss other things that absolutely absolutely i think that this is going to be um one of the most important elections that we as people are facing in our lifetime so make sure you look into the candidates research them and do your due diligence and once they are elected hold them accountable and make sure mm -hmm. that they keep their word and you know integrity is is a big part of public service so absolutely. we want to encourage that in all the candidates so thank you again for coming we will um, see you guys later. Make sure you follow us at CTD underscore ATL on Instagram. Um, and, you know, talk, educate, let us know what you guys think about what's going on, and we will respond. Okay, thanks. Peace.